5G is using massive antenna arrays that are placed at the location where we are used to put base stations. The box here might be 1 meter times half a meter and contains 64 antennas. And these 64 antennas enables us to transmit signals towards users located in different directions. They are focus signals, that is what we call beamforming, and serving multiple use at the same time is called spatial multiplexing. Even if these arrays are called massive because we have a large number of antennas, they are not physically large. When we put a 1 meter sized array at a rooftop far away from the user, it will be electrically small. It will be viewed as being small from the eyes of the user, even if it has many antennas. In the future, we might however have really electrically large arrays that are spreading over the entire facade of a building or being inside. We will have maybe even more antennas, but in particular the array will fill up our field of view. So what happens when the array becomes electrically large, either because they are very large or because we are very close to them, as in the scenario here? Well, in the new article, power scaling laws and near field behaviors of massive MIMO and intelligent reflective surfaces, in the IEEE Open Journal of the Communication Society, you get the answer. The authors are considering large arrays of three different types, a massive MIMO receiver, which is an active array, a decode and forward relay that is receiving the signal in the big array and then it retransmits it, and an intelligent reflecting surface which is reflecting the signal towards another location. When the user is in the near field of a large array, there are three properties that are appearing that we usually neglect in the far field. The first one is that the distance from the user to the different antennas are going to be different. The second one is that even if each antenna have the same physical size, they will have different effective antenna areas because we view them from different angles. And the third one is that since we are sending signals that are arriving from different angles, we will have different polarization losses. The first contribution is that the authors are deriving a received signal power expression and demonstrate that these three properties needs to be taken into account to get the correct result in the near field. If we neglect any of them, the result will be misleading. When does this matter? When does the near field appear? Well, the second contribution is that the authors are driving the signal to noise ratio and data rate that it can achieve with these three different types of arrays that can be large. And they are showing that it is when the user is at a distance to the array that is smaller or equal to the width of the array that the near field effect appears. The third contribution is that the authors are analyzing the channel gain when the array grows large. For the massive MIMO receiver and the decode and forward relay, they show that in the far field we are getting a channel gain that grows proportional to the area of the array. This is what we are used to from the past. In the near field the growth rate is becoming smaller and we get a convergence to receiving one third of the transmitted power. With an intelligent reflective surface we will capture less energy when we have the same size of it, however the authors are providing expression for how much larger it needs to be to receive the same signal power as with the other types of arrays. The fourth contribution is that the authors are explaining that the mirror operation is not preferable when using an intelligent reflecting surface or IRS. So what this means is that when we are increasing the number of element and therefore the area of the array, the channel gain is going to increase. And when you are in the far field, so that the IRS is viewed as being small, then the whole surface will behave as a scatter, that is scattering the signal with the directivity towards the user. And as you make it larger, you see that the channel gain is improving. Then at a particular point, you are matching what a mirror, an ideal mirror, will deliver. If you operate it as a mirror, it will converge to the channel gain of an infinitely large mirror. However, if we are instead operating the IRS in order to focus the signal at the receiver, then we will beamform the signal at the location where the receiver is and we can achieve a much higher channel gain. If you want to know more, I recommend you to read the paper Power Scaling Laws and Near Field Behaviors of Massive MIMO and Intelligent Reflecting Surfaces, published in the IEEE Open Journal of the Communication Society in 2020.